Dustin Ryder looking. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Machine Sentai Kara Major, episode 29, the debut of our new mecha, Grateful Phoenix, and it was a great debut. That was a bad joke. This was another good episode. I really liked this episode even better than last week's. I thought it was kind of a great conclusion to this sort of two-part introduction. And we pick up where we were last week, where Embark just saved them from the giant monster. And after it flies off to recharge, the rangers are like, okay, take us to this promised land to heal our zords. And he's like, well, it's not really going to make a difference because what healed people in this dimension was actually this stone, but this stone is also, like, rusted over and, like, having a, a bad time just like your Zords. But then Drew was like, it doesn't matter, I got this key from a Harry Potter dream, so let's go. So they take him to the Al Aladdin, Aladdin dimension or whatever it is, which I honestly thought was just, like, an empty dimension filled with, like, crystal powers. But there's people there, and the rangers notice that, and it's not just people, it's people and creepers in Purge Night masks coexisting. So that's kind of interesting. I guess he just transported some humans and him <laughs> that's all, folks. He transported some humans and some crystallians to that, like, Earth dimension, so that's... I spoiler alert, I'm willing to bet that's what the series finale is going to look like, is may maybe they'll restore Crystallia, but they I could also see them making it so Earth and the Crystallians all live together on Earth. So they're going to have all the Crystallians living on Earth in this one, and then Juoger, where the Jumans live on the Earth too, and they're all still going to pretend like it exists in the same universe. Come on, son. So after they find that, they find the doors that they need to go through, and Juru is like, well, we have to find the right one because I have a key, and the Rangers like, it doesn't matter, and they just go through four random doors and end up fighting evil versions of themselves. Not like an evil version, just another Kia Major like this one. And then Juru is trying to figure out what to do because obviously the other Rangers made the wrong choice, and he's like, wait a minute, I'm an imagination guy, I can just draw a keyhole because none of the doors have keyholes. So he draws a keyhole and finds his way to that Harry Potter dimension that uh, Oridin is in. And while all this is going on, uh, sidetracking, uh, you have Silver is protecting the planet from the dragon when it returns again, and then you have the bad guys revealing, or the new lady bad guy revealing to Garza, that this whole time they have had King Oridin frozen in carbonite, and that he was trying to do a Sith essence transfer just like his wife did before he got exploded and it didn't work and they trapped him. And honestly, when they were first talking about this, I thought, I'm like, okay, this is what happened. He transferred his essence to uh, Juru, and that's why he has the ability. But that's not what happened, because Juru finds him, and he transfers himself into the crystal that was that he created that was creating the rejuvenation which transforms him into the phoenix which low-key to me looks a little bit more like a pterodactyl dinos again so they heal the mecha up they go back to fight and then it's pretty cool because drew and the king uh like show their drawings off at the same time because they both have the inspiration to combine him with his mentor to create grateful phoenix and drew transforms into the power-up mode so this is basically a red ranger mecha but grateful phoenix looks so cool. I really love the designs in this series in general, but this is probably my favorite. It's like another really good mix of something new, a little bit of a classic vibe, and it just looks really awesome, and it's got the cool glowy bit, and you know, they, he fights and he destroys the monster, which is cool too, because that monster had a hand in destroying Crystallia, so the fact that Oridin's helping with it as the mecha is kind of like a nice, you know, full circle moment as well. And like when they were fighting, it was a little bit overcast, not like where I was watching it, but in the show which made the, you know, the crystal glow. Um, and it made me miss, I was thinking in the early days, we had a lot of night fights, which really showed off the glowingness, to use a real science-y term, of the mecha. And I thought they were going to do that the whole time. And then they stopped, and I kind of stopped noticing. So I'm kind of hoping we get a night fight, a couple more night fights uh, somewhere in the rest of the series. But especially, I'd love to see one with, like, all the mecha that have, like, glowy parts and do a night fight. I just wanted to mention that. But anyway, at the end then, you know, uh, crystal... Pterodactyl, Phoenix, uh, Oridin is floating above them, and he's like, well, I'll see you guys later, so I guess he's not, I mean, he'll probably show up all the time, they want to use the mecha to show off the new toy, but I thought he was going to sort of stick around more, but he's kind of flying off to wherever, before he got to reunite with his daughter, he reunited with his son a little bit, and obviously with the rangers, well, not reunited, like, knighted, because he just met them, except for Juru, who's met in his dreams, like a weird, wholesome Freddy Krueger. This is a really good episode, I really liked the way this worked, I kind of wish that the villains having Oridin's, like, carbonite thing was set up a little earlier, but Oridin c communicating with Juru, and then all this other stuff with the, uh, the phoenix, like when he went to visit the guy in the phoenix rising becomes the phoenix, was a really nice setup and payoff for this episode with him becoming the phoenix and like rising from the ashes and then him combining with his, his mentor like 
Crystallia Zord was really cool. Like I said, I really like the design. I just really love that this has a significant story to it. It's not just a like, oh hey, here's a new toy debut. So it makes the whole thing memorable. I thought that the villains having him not only created a new dimension to it, but then it creates something new for Garza because he's going off somewhere as well. It was just a really, really good episode. I liked it a lot. I really loved the show. I would give it a nine. But what did you guys think? Did you enjoy this week's Kara Major and the debut of Grateful Phoenix? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can see some of my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.